What is going on, everybody? Welcome into another edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up here on this gorgeous Wednesday, October 4th, 2023. As always, I am your humble correspondent, Michael Tanner, coming to you from an undisclosed location here in Dallas, Texas, joined by the executive producer of the show, the purveyor of the show, and the director and publisher of the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com, Stuart Turley, my man. How we doing today? It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood, dude. We're having a blast. Uh, it's it's a great day, and we have an excellent menu lined up. First up, straight out of Switzerland. Switzerland plans to ban electric cars from the roads and orders game consoles to be turned off during power shortages in a bid to reduce energy consumption. The only thing that's left is to start burning shoots, but uh, hopefully we don't get there yet. But interesting plans out of Switzerland. Stu will cover it all. Next up, love a good play on words. AI, AI, O-O, <laughs> artificial intelligence to power consumption or artificial intelligence power about to skyrocket and nobody is prepared. Very interesting how this loops in um, um, with the energy crisis. So very excited to cover a little AI on this one. Next up, LNG prices do soften by the end of the decade. That's according to Total Energy's CEO. So interesting. Not sure if I necessarily agree with that one, but Stu will dive into what's coming out of um, the Total Energy CEO's mouth. And next up, a new study zaps Biden's energy plan to transform the electrical uh, grid. Next up, and finally, at least $12 trillion in the oil industry will be needed in terms of investments to prevent a spike in energy prices. That's according to the OPEC chief. Stu will then kick it over to me. I'll cover what happened um, in the global market, uh, in the overall markets and oil and gas. And the overall markets got pounded today. Stu, oil did see a little bit of a resurgence. It's nat gas flirting with $3. Um, and then we'll cover what the API um, is projecting um, the EIA crude oil storage numbers to come into. All of that and a bag of chips is coming up, guys. But first, as always, the news and analysis you are about to hear are brought to you by that world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy news. Stu does a great job of curating that website to making sure it stays up to speed with everything you need to know about the U.S. and international energy um, industry. I would call this, guys, people who read Energy News Beat are what I like to call tip of the spear people. They are on the front lines of knowledge. They're on the front lines of analysis, and they're doing the work that's needed. Tip of the spear people. Love that phrase. Um, the best way to subscribe to the show and support the show is to subscribe to us on YouTube at Energy News Beat. Hit that subscribe button. Like one of our videos. Comment. You can also listen to the show via Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. You can email the show questions at energynewsbeat.com look at the description below you can also get a hold of the show that way see all the links to the articles we are about to cover and the individual timestamps. i'm out of breath though Stu. where do you want to begin i mean this is a whopper of a show dude okay there's a whole theme between the how we normally bring the stories together in an artful way Ah, this one's just way too fun. Okay, Switzerland plans to ban electric cars from the roads in order game consoles turned off during power shortages in a bid to reduce energy consumption. Holy smokes, Batman. Okay, this is just an amazing piece of um, information here. Uh, Switzerland and is really trying to get ahead of this, and that goes into some of the other articles. Crisis restrictions could see all sports stadiums and leisure businesses closed. In emergency situation, electric vehicles will be banned from all but essential trips. Define wow. an essential trip, though. What's considered an essential trip? hospital you know what if what, what if i'm out of garlic for my pasta does that count uh if you're trying to stay away from a vampire i guess it does but that was exactly that was, exactly so i love yeah. this but essential trips what classifies as essential trip what's interesting is what forced them to draw up these emergency plans was the fact that they are hit by current blackouts right now in which our currently causing sh open shops to close two hours early per day they get 60 percent michael of their energy from hydro uh, electric power stations such as dams across rivers or generators placed between lakes 
Oh, what a great description that was. Boy, I guess they need a few well, more. Well, we beavers. love that. I mean, we absolutely love the fact that they're getting yes. the majority of their energy from hydro. It's just making sure you have enough of that. It's really hard to ramp up hydro. That's one of the downsides to it is it's really a set, you know, it's a, it's kind of a set amount. Right. And, hey, I, I got a follow-along uh, article with this one, and that is over here on this screen. But the the EU, try this one on. There's a couple right. developments with EVs. This one is, we'll pay all the price of soaring EV insurance. The consumers are going to get it in the drive through with this one. In the UK, The Guardian published an article which says driving electric car should be a win-win saving money and the planet so david was shocked when the insurance on his tesla model y came up for renewal and avia aviva refused to cover him again while other brands turned him away david did secure a new deal but the cost rocketed from 1200 pounds to more than 5000 pounds Wow. Yeah. So, don't uh of of it's gonna be interesting the insurance game surrounding all these EVs. And and in insurance goes off of numbers of replacement, how mm -hmm. many are being blowed up, as Larry the cable guy would say. Yep. And there was another ban that came out two days ago from the electric or from the uh carriers. They're refusing to allow car carriers being transported on the oceans uh by car carriers because they've been blowed up there too so anyway okay it, let's go to the next it's all one. a mess let's talk about ai okay ai ai oh oh boy this is a doop a doop a doop boop doop. Just say, i'm <laughs> dancing over here oh yeah artificial intelligence power consumption about to skyrocket and no one is prepared i gotta admit this is kind of an inner interesting kind of a point michael what is ai helping you with ai in my opinion in my day-to-day -day job isn't right. quite helping outside of the chat gtp GitHub Copilot plugin, which, right. to be honest, is actually a huge help. So I'm going to reverse the start of my sentence. And say, it's actually helping me out a lot. Copilot for code writing is absolutely insane. How is it helping the world at large? Eh, we'll see. Okay. All of the uh, energy, the convergence of factors, the way that Susan uh, Lenku explains it is a convergence of factors, including the availability of massive amounts of data, the rise of machine learning algorithms, and the emergence of edge computing. That's the key. And edge computing mm -hmm. is the ability for everything to be plugged into the IoT. And I always hate the IoT mm -hmm. because everybody's throwing the all-seeing eye. The all-seeing eye. But the the problem that we're seeing here is everything's got to be connected. And nobody is really going after cutting the the power down. You know, how do you, how do you the NIMBYs don't want the wind farms in their backyard, but who's gonna actually cut out power? Of course, I'm one to talk. I got 10 screens, ring. Well, light. it's Switzerland. Switzerland seems like the ones that's cutting down. I mean, it's they're just preparing for what is probably inevitable fact of of, of a shortfall of electrical generation. Oh, absolutely. Um, anyway, so I think it's going to be pretty bad. My, uh, I do know a little bit about server farms, Michael, and servers just use... Just a little bit. Uh, just a little bit of cover of big ones. And, but I'll tell you what, they absolutely suck the power down. I was working on one with the DOD, and I guarantee you that thing, we had to measure out an entire section for an $8 million server. A good chunk, another million was air conditioning. Ah. Well, nice. yeah, that's the whole thing about these data farms is you got to you, you gotta <laughs> slow them down. You know, where are all the chips coming from? I mean, there's a lot. Yep. Okay. From a from a power consumption standpoint and from an energy demand standpoint, AI is going to be a large driver of it, specifically with a lot of that high-powered computing. Let's move on to LNG, though. What's Total Energy CEO saying? Okay, I'll tell you what. This is going to be kind of interesting, and it it is uh, 
uh, global prices of liquefied natural gas, uh, Michael, they call that LNG, okay. uh, are expected to soften by the end of the decade as CEO um, said in, at Cutter on Tuesday, he says it's better for everyone to have more supply in the market to stabilize the price than having a tense market like today. Probably the end of the decade, we will see a softening of LNG prices. But that's um, probably after a drastic rise in the overall price of LNG it, due to the fact that demand is kicking up. But he is right. There's a lot of new LNG supply coming to the market. The problem is a lot of that's contracted up. So to say prices right. are softening is to say, well, how much excess spare capacity is going to be available at the end of the decade? That's not all wrapped up in long-term contracts as we've aptly covered on this show. Well, I think that you're going to see that the prices are going to remain high and it's hard to put a finger on it because we are seeing a resurgence in everybody needing energy and in the U.S., this other story uh, that we're going to cover about the uh, new study zaps Biden's uh, grid updates, this is related to that story because we need all types of energy and we're bringing uh, coal and natural gas plants down before we can actually get them replaced. So I think there's going to be a long-term play for LNG. And countries like you know Qatar, Saudi Arabia as we covered yesterday they all are keenly keenly aware of this and are positioning themselves much like the Chinese did 10 years ago with the critical mineral space they are oh, yeah. positioning themselves to be the leaders of LNG you you already teased it let's talk about uh this study that just uh quote unquote zapped Biden's plan oh you bet hey a new study zaps Biden's plan to transform the electrical grid you know i do a pretty good uh, Biden imitation. I mean, excuse me, Putin imitation. I can do a pretty good Biden imitation too, but so can my wall. So okay. I was just sleeping. That was my Biden impression. <laughs> just taking a quick nap. There you go. Okay. They believe simply they can implement laws and regulations and executive orders and provide hundreds of billions in yep. subsidies. And voila. <laughs> the green energy transformation will proceed on schedule with no supply chain disruptions, blackouts, escalating costs, or economic and environmental consequences. <laughs> All right. Well, what's this study say? It says absolutely no way. It says there are no, there is no data actually supporting concerns about more frequent or inter intense hurricanes or tornadoes. The U.S. Electric Utility uh, Industries Electric Power Research Institute concludes that the industry simply cannot reach net zero in generating electricity. So-called clean energy sources give the electrification not a sufficient by themselves to reach net zero. <laughs> now, if you don't trust the, the electrical industry's own lobbying firm, which rightfully so, you know, they're they're paid to say electricity is going to be scarce. Listen to what Mark Christie said, who is right. the energy commissioner for FERC, which is the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. He's recently told Quangos, and this is a quote, the problem is not the addition of wind and solar. The problem is a subtraction of coal, gas, and other dispatchable resources that we need during this transition. The grid has been powered. The grid has to be powered, being fed into every second of every minute of every hour of every day to keep the lights on, which is a, in my opinion, highlights the entire problem that we've been dealing with here is that we need more dispatchable things to make sure that the lights are on of every second, of every minute, right. of every hour, of every day. And, and the article goes on uh, a little bit earlier in there, Michael, to actually say, um, and then all of the coal and natural gas plants were always ready. They were near the population. And like in Texas, they had to spend the $3 billion to bring the, the grid from West Texas to East Texas. They didn't want to have everybody move from Dallas to Midland. You know, nobody wants to do that. Who, who wants to do that? <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about uh, what OPEC's got to say. Okay, Michael. Uh, yesterday, I even said, okay, this is the first time I've been wrong in three years that you and I have been doing podcasts together. I first said, time you've four, been wrong this week? 
Ooh, snap. Bottle. Uh, boom. Um, um, I, I said four trillion in oil in, des- in industry investments are needed just to meet decline curves. In Biden's inflation just hit. That was as of yesterday. Now this article I found this morning was like at least twelve trillion in oil industry investments are needed to prevent a spike in energy prices. OPEC chief says. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. OPEC Secretary General uh, warned that energy prices could spike due to underinvestment. By underinvesting, we actually endangering energy security. I think this is the first time I've heard somebody equate the underinvestment to damaging energy security. Outside of right. you, obviously, Stu, you've said this. Somebody on the global stage has finally come out and said what yeah. I think has been obvious to this podcast. The underinvestment in the oil and gas business is going to lead to insanely high energy prices, and it's right. going to lead to drastically, drastically lower energy security for countries, specifically like the United States, who rely oh. so heavily on it. You know, what's funny, Michael, is when you and I were uh, starting the show three years ago, we were sitting here kind of going, what's a few billion between friends? Now we say, what's a few trillion between friends? And I sit there and look at decline curves around the corner and go, all of a sudden, you know, I've been very comfortable with throwing around $4 trillion to drill. Up for, it. To, no, got to up it. Biden struck again. <laughs> all right. What else you got? Yeah, that that's it? it for today. I had way too much fun. Thanks for letting me yeah. play in the sandbox. Absolutely. We'll, we'll we'll cover the finance markets right now, guys. Overall, S&P down 1.3 percentage point. NASDAQ tumbles 1.8 percentage, really off the back of, of a few separate things. Obviously, we have um uh, we just have the overall, you know, market sentiment right now. You know, it, you know, stronger dollar comes out. We've got darkening global economic um, um, signals really leading to a drop in, in those in stocks today. Um, I, I, you know. When we look at oil and gas prices specifically, we're actually up today considering the fact we saw a quote unquote stronger dollar. Um, WTI contract um, settles, um, um, WTI, excuse me, settled at 89.23, currently trading 89.53 as we record this, about 5.53 here on the third. Um, again, mainly due to the fact that, you know, what we see is a little bit of a, a tighter supply picture. We were also helped, Stu, by the fact that the U.S. Um, uh, API weekly crude oil stock estimate came out. And they think there's going to be a 4.2 million barrel draw, which actually beat estimates of about basically a tenth or, or, or flat draw. So going to be interesting. That's really helped buoy prices up. It's going to be interesting to see what the EIA drops. As you're listening to this on Wednesday, you'll hear that number about 930 Central Time. Other than that, kind of quiet on the on the, on the oil and gas front news. I mean, unless you want to break down Apache reducing methane emissions by converting two thousand nomadic devices to lower emitting technologies, we should probably have a quick moment of silence for them. All right, that's enough. Um, good job. Um, what else do? What should people be scared about? Well, we have a new speaker of the house as of this morning, so. You know, I, oh, is I, that official? Look yeah, he's gone. It's he, you. They, 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 you finally got the gig. And yeah, they're calling me up and Trump. They want you know it's between me and Trump right now. But I'll tell you what, old Matt Gates is not going to get uh, invited to the uh, McCarthy Christmas party this year. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think they'll be exchanging. Uh, uh, exchanging Christmas cards this year. No, Absolutely. but uh, I am interviewing uh, Andy uh, today, uh, which is, this is going to be actually out on the 4th, and uh, I'll be interviewing him, and I'm going to turn that episode around real quick. So Yeah. Absolutely. So, all right, Stu. Well, if you don't got anything, we'll let everybody get out of here, get back to work. As always, appreciate you checking us out on the world's greatest podcast. For Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.